had a smaller group today with representation from the Cincinnati, Dayton, and Indianapolis grottos. As we make our way across the footbridge, we'll be walking by the original Cripps Mill site. This is what the old mill looked like in the early 1900s. And this is what it looks like now. The Cripps family also used the water from the cave to support a trout farm. Here are some pictures of the old trout pool. It's a short walk from the mill to the cave entrance. If you look to the left, you can see the old aqueduct that was used to convey water from the cave to the mill. Here is a map of the cave which was surveyed back in 1974. Altogether the total length of the cave is roughly 6,000 feet. When looking at the map there are four main passages, one of which leads into Goat Cave. Goat Cave is quarantined because it is a bat nursery for a variety of species. Joe Douglas, who is an associate professor of history at Ball State College, wrote an interesting article about the Cripps Mill Cave. In the article, Joe mentioned the cave is located in the Big B Cannon limestone layer and was formed over 485 million years ago. Joe mentioned some research that was conducted between 2011 and 2015 that revealed a prehistoric Native American component. There was evidence of aboriginal exploration in the form of river cane charcoal deposits and stoke marks on the walls and rocks. Here's a couple of examples of what stoke marks look like. This could be the big room. This is a pretty large breakdown room, and Harry is making his way down the large rock pile. As mentioned previously, you can find cane stoke marks in this room if you look around. All of the cave branches spins off from this main room. So this looks like it's uh, old remnants of a calcite pool? Yeah, it looks like they had water flow in here and it had calcite floating on the surface and the water evaporated and left the calcite crust here. That's an interesting pyramid formation in the back there. There's three of them. People in Tennessee found other uses for caves besides using their water. During the Civil War, many people used caves for their hiding places. In the early 19th century, the highwayman, John Murrell's gang, hid in the Blue Springs Cave, where they also disposed the corpses of their murdered victims. One of the more well-known uses of caves in Tennessee was in the manufacturing of moonshine. They provided shelter and also hid their workspace from the local authorities. Moonshining became very popular and illegal in 1909 when Tennessee went dry.
The entrance to this section has a low ceiling, but the floor is soft so it won't hurt your knees. Our first stop in this passage was the bat room. Before we went into this room, we made sure it was vacant, which it was. This room had a very nice formation in the center of it, along with several large piles of bat guano. There's a perspective on how small those are. Baby newts! When caving, you need to watch where you're walking to avoid the natural cave life that lives on the cave floor and in small pools. Sometimes they are very difficult to see. We are in the last passage that branches off the Grand Central Station toward Goat Cave. In this area we had to climb down and up some hills, both of which were quite tricky. Thankfully there were a couple of ropes installed to help circumvent these obstacles. Just up here on the ledge and to the right is the Goat Cave intersection. There is a sign posted at the intersection that advises this area is restricted since Goat Cave is a bat nursery. The entrance to Goat Cave is a small hole and has a horrible stench blowing out of it which Harry and Sean could attest to. We stayed out of that section and started heading out of the cave. Here we can see the cave exit. This is quite a pretty shot, but we aren't too excited about walking out into 90 degree temperatures from this nicely air conditioned cave. We've been in this cave for about four hours, which included extra time to shoot some video and take pics. You can easily see all of this cave in two hours or less. It's a small pretty cave and would be great for novices. I might recommend, if you are caving in this area, making this cave the first stop of your trip and then driving up the road five minutes to visit Indian Grave Point Cave. For more information on caving, you can visit the National Speleological Society's website to find a caving club close to you. Thanks for watching.